Hi, teacher Tina here. I am a teacher for VIP Kid and I also coach candidates through the hiring process. So today I'm going to discuss VIP Kids Mock Class 1. I'll start off with some general tips, then I'll move into slide-by-slide -slide examples and ideas for TPR and props. And then, lastly, I'm going to share a time suggestion table. So I have gone through and practiced and figured out approximately how much time it works for me to get to the 15 minute mark. So hopefully it'll give you a general idea as well. So without further ado, I'm going to get started. So the very first thing I'm going to discuss is that what works for one teacher may not work for you. Okay, so you may see an example, maybe something I do that you think, I don't know if I can do that. I'd rather do it like this. That's fine, do it like that. As long as you are focusing on the lesson's objectives and the target sentences, and you are being really effective in your teaching time-wise, you're probably okay with what you decide to do. So make it your own. If you like what you see, you can do it, but you can make it your own too. Another thing to keep in mind is that uh, you will be evaluated on a rubric, but like any time there's a rubric, there usually is some type of subjectivity to it, right? So you may think that you spoke at a great rate, at a, a great pace, but maybe your mock class mentor thought that you spoke too fast, right? There's a little bit of subjectivity there, so keep that in mind when you get your results. Uh, you know, overdo things a little bit be extra energetic, uh, speak a little slower than you think is necessary, just so that hopefully you get all of the points that you're expecting to get. Another tip is you want to set the stage. So lighting is very, very important. You'll notice there's a little bit of a shadow behind me. That's okay, but I don't want a shadow on my face anywhere. Uh, so keep in mind, even when you're holding up props and that sort of thing, uh, look, watch out for glare if anything has you know shine to it, like maybe a board. Uh, look out for shadows. Uh, you want to be sure that you are very visible and that you're close enough. You know, I'm about an arm's distance away from my camera. That's a good rule of thumb. And then I, I actually stand while I teach. So I have the option to come in closer or go further depending on what I'm doing in the lesson. So use that space really effectively as well. So you want to set the stage. Another part of setting the stage is having headphones. Are they absolutely necessary? I think they are. Um, I think not only does it help you hear your mock class mentor, but it helps your mock class mentor hear you better as well. And you just look like you're ready for the job, right? Yes, you can wear earbuds, that's okay, but it looks like you're a lot readier for your classes if you have this ready to go. So that's just my personal tip. I will post the link for this headset below uh, so that you can get it if you want. Typically it runs between mm, $20, $25 for this particular set and I really like it. So anyway, you want to look professional, right? So another tip for that is, you know, look put together, you don't want to look like you just rolled out of bed, so be sure that your hair looks decent. You don't need to go all crazy, beehive, whatever. Just make sure it looks good uh, with your headset also. And keep your jewelry and makeup presentable, simple. If you you know wear makeup or jewelry, just keep it simple so it's not distracting to your student. Um, and yeah, but the most important thing to look like is prepared. Uh, so you need to be sure that you practice a lot. And the main thing that I notice when I'm Skyping people is uh, people need to be more aware of where their props are. I see it all the time that people are trying to go through a slide and they're, you know, lifting stuff up. They're bumping their computer like that. They're, they're shuffling. You hear papers and it's really unprofessional. Uh, so just be sure that you know where your props are and keep the stuff that's on your desk to a minimum so that you don't have to find your props. They should be within reach. Uh, that's, that's really the best tip I have for you for looking prepared is making sure you know where your stuff is. So that's pretty much all that I have for the general tips. And now I'm going to move right in to going slide by slide to help you. Uh, keep in mind at the end, I will tell you how long to spend on each slide, uh, but I'm going to jump right in. So 
Your very first slide is the one that says VIP kid, letter X, mock class one. This is where you meet your student, right? So in the beginning, when you first got into your mock class and your mock class mentor showed up, you spoke with him or her for a few minutes. You know, she may have asked you, how do you think you did on the last stage? Um, what are you trying to improve? What questions do you have? And then she'll have you move into the mock class one's beginner level lesson. This is the 15 minute lesson that I'll be covering today. So this very first slide is just your intro slide. So pretend that your mock class mentor is that five-year-old beginner student. Okay, so if you want to use a name tag, you can take it down at this point and introduce yourself. So I'm going to show you how I would recommend introducing yourself. Uh, of course, there are lots of ways to do it and I'll kind of sum it up at the end as well. So here it goes. Three, two, one. Hello. Hi. My name is Teacher Tina. Teacher Tina, Tina. Tina. Hi, Tina. Hi. Hmm. What is your name? Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Hmm. How old are you? Five? Good, good. I am five years old. I am five years old. Good job, Leslie. Very good. When you do a good job today, you get... Whoop. <gasps> A marble. Oh, wow, a marble. Good job. That's all you need. That is your intro. So I recommend that you say greetings, then you say names, and then you ask a question or two. You can ask how are you, how old are you, um, one or both, whatever you choose to do. I think you can just ask one, but it's up to you. Um, and then I like to get my student to speak a full sentence in the intro so that I set that precedent, right? So that's why I would either have them say, my name is blank, or I am blank with the name, um, or probably and, I would have them say their age in a full sentence. I am five years old, right, with the five fingers because then they know, oh, wow, I am going, to, I got to pull up my pants, get ready, get my big boy pants on, because I'm about to use my full sentences. They know that at that point. So um, I really like to just introduce my reward slide on the first slide, because personally, I don't really like to use the rewards that are offered in the lesson PowerPoints. I think they tend to be a little dry uh, that's just my opinion. You are welcome to use them if you'd like. I suggest printing them out and having them behind you. When I did my mock class, I actually did use the marbles in this jar and I had a desk behind me that I sat it on so it was visible. That's ideal to have it visible. Uh, I do have a video about reward systems so I'm not focusing on that today. But just keep in mind that throughout the lesson, you should be giving rewards and not spending a ton of time doing it either. Just every, every time that you feel you should give a reward, do it. So um, I seamlessly kind of gloss over that reward system slide, slide number two, because I introduce it on the first one. So I kind of just click through it. But if you choose to use the one that's on there, you can certainly do it on slide number two. That totally works. Okay, moving on the warm up slide. So they should know some of these words already, but of course kids can forget, even fake kids can forget. Um, so what I recommend doing, uh, first of all, you don't have to have a prop for every single thing that's on here. You can do a combination of props and TPR or just TPR, whatever you want to do. 
And you don't have to go in a specific order. You don't have to start with tomato if you don't want to start with tomato. Um, so for example, if I wanted to start with ruler, right, I would probably have a ruler handy. A lot of people have rulers that they use for this one because it's kind of hard to show a ruler with TPR. It kind of looks like pretty much any other object of that shape and size. Um, so I would say, oh, ruler, ruler, oh, I circle the ruler and I would actually circle it on the slide. You can print this slide out if you want. I don't think you need to do that because you shouldn't spend that much time on it. Um, but just demonstrate the first one, right? So ruler, ruler, I circle the ruler, and then I would say, oh, I see a ruler. I see a ruler. Good, yes. Okay, and then you can go on to the other ones that are on there. Uh, it's kind of cool that elbow and tongue are on there because most people are able to use their own body parts for that. Uh, no need to go find a picture of an elbow when you have one right here, right? So, you know, you, you want to be sure that you are accentuating the an if they're not doing it right. Also, like I see an elbow. So for example, um, I would probably say, Elbow, elbow, circle the elbow. Good job, Leslie. I see an elbow. I see. Good job. And you take the training wheels off slowly, right? So the first one, I demonstrated. I demonstrated the whole thing. The second one, I had the student circle, right? And I helped out with the ICN. And then slowly you take those training wheels off so that by the end, you know, you can stick out your tongue, say, tongue, tongue. And they'll probably circle it without you having to say it. But if not, you can remind them. Circle the tongue. Good. <gasps> right, they probably will get the hang of it at that point. If they don't, help them out. You're kind of evaluating their abilities on this slide a little bit um, and also letting them know that they really need to put on their thinking cap for this lesson, right? So you don't want to spend a ton of time on the warm up, but use some props, you know. Um, Dollar Tree has cute little furniture, uh, but you can definitely use TPR like table, table, whatever you want to do. Just get through this slide pretty quickly. Um, the main thing on this one is that you are getting them to do the I see a table or I see an, what is it, an elbow, right? You really want that target sentence because they're going to be using it later. Uh, that's the main thing there. Something else to note, whether you say a or a, like a table or a table, it's really up to you. Um, this is often debated by teachers. Just go with your gut, whatever you prefer to do. All right, the next slide is the review slide with the lovely fish on there. And I think this slide can be a little confusing because it's kind of combining letter sounds and letter names. Uh, so you really, really want to be clear on what you're ex expecting your student to do here. So the teacher directions say that teacher makes letter sound, student matches big and small letters, student repeats letter name and sound. Okay, so really quickly, the letter sounds, we are doing synthetic phonics, so it's like the shortest possible version of the sound. So the L would actually be O, O. Oh, oh, right? The K is k, 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 k. The S is s, 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 s. And the R is er, 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 er. Avoid doing the schwa, which is the la, ra, right? It's not ra when you're blending. That does not blend nicely. So, oh, k, s, er are the sounds that you want for here. So, you should be practicing that because that's what you will be expected to use. Um, 
when I did this slide, I was really silly with it. And I think it paid off well because my mock class mentor was really laughing at it and had a good time. So what I did, as soon as I clicked to this slide, I went like this. I said, oh, 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 big L, small L. I draw a line. I draw a line. Right? And I actually drew a line on the screen. Now, do you have to have a bucket and a fish? No, you don't. I'm just weird and had these things sitting around. So, do what you want. Um, I think it's nice to have some kind of simple visual, uh, but you can just use the slide for this one. So you want to make the letter sound. So demonstrate the first one. You can do it like I did. Make the sound, big L, small L, and draw the line so that you model the first one. Now you don't have to start with letter L. You can start with another one if you'd like, um, but be sure that you go letter by letter and that you are taking those training wheels off. Okay, um, so for example, uh, maybe I want to do the S, S one next, okay? So I would uh, go S, S. Good. Hmm. Where is big S? Big S. Circle big S, right? It might be helpful to have them circle. And then where is small s? Circle small s. Good. <gasps> draw a line. Draw a line. And you have them draw a line. And eventually they only have one bucket and one fish left. So it goes pretty fast. Uh, don't spend a ton of time on this slide. It is review even though it's weird. And then you want to have your student repeating, you know, the letter sound. So after you do a bucket and a fish, you could do, you know, you can just use the slide at this point and say, oh, big L, small L. Oh, big L, small L. Right? And something really, really important to know is that the company uses the word small. It's not little, just small. It's simple and they will note it if you use the word little, it will show up on your evaluation. There's not really a great way that you would have known that. So that's, that's why I'm telling you, uh, be sure that you use the word small. Okay, so the next slide is also a review slide. There's a lot of review in this lesson for as short as it is. So just try to get through it as, as quickly but thoroughly as you can. Um, this next one is the KE slide and the teacher directions say, teacher says each word, asks students to repeat and then match to the letter sound, letter slash sound they hear. After each word, teacher and students say, blank starts with blank, right? This starts with this letter sound. So I suggest just foregoing props for this one. Yes, I said that, foregoing the props and just going with your TPR on this slide because there are a lot to get through and you don't wanna spend a lot of time on it. In fact, if you find that you are behind time, most mock class mentors are okay with you skipping a couple of them if you feel like you have to. Uh, so use your best judgment on that one. But for this one, for example, you could use, I suggest having, I said for going props, I meant for the words themselves. I do suggest that you have a letter K and a letter E. I used blocks for mine. You could also use cards if you want, um, maybe cover up the lowercase part so it's not confusing. Um, but basically you're just going picture by picture, whatever order you want. Okay, so if I wanted to start with elevator, I could do it like this. Teacher says each word. <gasps> elevator. Elevator. Right? So kind of like I'm going up and down an elevator. But fun tip, I also like to underline before I introduce that word so that they definitely know which one I'm talking about. Because the real trick here isn't that they should know all of the words is that they should be able to hear the word and identify the k or eh sound, okay? So, for example, for key, I would underline key and I would say key, key. Hmm. 
Key. Does key start with k or e? Key. Key. K or e? K. Very good. Right? And kind of feel out the level of your student. Uh, you may need to model the first one. Typically, that's a good idea. So you would just kind of give the answer for the first one so they can see, oh, she wants me to say k or she wants me to say e. Uh. Right, and then you just go slot. You go picture by picture, whatever order you want. Be sure that you are using some TPR. So, so basically, to simplify what I just said, um, you underline the picture. You use TPR to say what the picture is. Repeat, say, repeat, and then hold up your cards or your blocks, and have your student guess. You can even simplify it like this: k k or e eh, e eh, key. Key, good job. Key, key starts with k. Key starts with k. Good job, right? And then you move on. Really simple, just be sure they're using that noun starts with letter sound. Very important. Moving on. Okay, the next slide is the let's begin with the letter X. Okay. Uh, I get lots of questions about what sound the letter X makes. Since we're teaching it, we definitely need to know what sound it actually makes. And the easiest thing to think of, I think, is that the letter X makes this sound. Right? It makes the sound of a carbonated beverage when you open it. Um, it's just right? So. This slide is pretty simple. It just says teacher teaches the letter name, size, and sound. And then you use the target sentence, X makes the sound X. Okay, so um, some tips for you. I definitely recommend that you use some kind of visual, right? So whether that be a card like this, um, or maybe you have a block that has both sizes on it. Maybe you even have like an alphabet order that you can use and just focus on the X, right? But you, I definitely recommend that you have something that easily shows the size differences. Of course, it's on the screen too. Um, but I, I have seen people do it before that they show the letters one at a time. So they'll say, you know, like big X, small X. Okay, well, they kind of look the same when they're separated, right? You can't really tell which one's the big X or the small X until they're next to each other. So. You don't have to go and buy a card. You can easily make one of these. Just write X, a big X and a small X on an index card, super easy. Um, something else, I definitely recommend using the same color cards for both so they don't think that you're differentiating the colors by showing the different sizes if you do use two different ones next to each other. Um, you want the only difference really to be the size of the X. So basically, you know, um, you can use the slide, or you can use one like this and say, oh, Big X! Big X! Big X! Good! Big X! Very good! Small X! Small X! Good. So you want them repeating it. Uh, but the most important thing is getting them saying the X sound. And then you can use the screen if you want. Um, have them maybe circle the big X or circle the small X. Um, and then you just want them to be saying X makes the sound X. You can use your fingers too if you want. That's what I did in mine. X makes the sound X. X. Right? And then we could do big X small x and you'll notice that there is the american sign language for x on there um, you don't have to use that i actually had one uh, candidate that i helped and she was paralyzed on the one side so she did use that and it worked perfectly fine and to be honest she had such good tpr throughout her lesson when she practiced for me that i didn't even remember that she was paralyzed on that side and now she's a very, very successful teacher, and she does an amazing job with TPR and props, even just with one side. 
So just keep in mind, you can kind of make it your own on this one. Just get your student using that sound. Okay, the next one, uh, number seven, if you're following along, and it's number seven, check it out, um, is the fox one, right? The fox, oh, so cute. You do not have to have a fox. Um, if you have a fox, that's great. This is a spoon rest. It works, but you don't have to have a fox. And really, I like to use TPR for a couple of reasons. First of all, it helps the student really remember, and the student can do it with you. If you are just using props and holding them up, the student probably doesn't have a fox sitting next to him or her to hold up with you. So it's a lot easier, and I think it's more fun to use TPR. So when you're introducing this, you know, you can say, oh, fox, 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 fox. You know, switch up the tone, your volume, um, your expression, so that they hear it in different ways. You can speak faster, slower have them saying fox several times so that it kind of sticks with them, right? You can use a prop if you want. I didn't want to squash your dreams. You can use a prop if you want, but I think you should also use TPR because it'll help out later as well. So fox, and then, you know, what do you see? They'll probably just say fox. Good, I see a fox. I see. Good job, right? So you really want them to use that target sentence on here. That's super important. Next one, number eight, is ox. So cute. Okay, so I like to do this one just like I did the fox one. If you have a prop, if you've got a, an ox in a box, go for it. Um, but definitely use some TPR here, whatever you choose. I like to do this for the ox or this. I've seen people do all different things you wouldn't believe, and it works as long as you're consistent. Um, so basically, you know, ox. Ox. Good. What do you see? Good. I see an ox. Good. I see an ox. Good. So there I was kind of pretending as though my student said, I see a ox, just so you could see. Um, and then, of course, you know, if you think the student needs a, a couple extra time saying ox, totally go for it. Okay, the next slide <laughs> makes me laugh. Slide number nine is the activity time slide. You don't really need to spend any time on this. You don't need to plan an activity. It is a filler slide. So you really shouldn't spend more than like 10 seconds on this slide. So most people just, you know, maybe grab something fun and just say, activity time, and then they move on. That's all you need. So I'm not even wasting time on that one. Okay. Um, the next one is the point and read with X. I get so many questions about this one, and I'd love to show you some of my favorite ways to do this one. Of course, you can just use, you know, the screen for it, but I think this is a really important one that you can easily use some, um, some props for that would really help your student out. So, uh, you know, I have a couple different ways that I do this. These are clothespins that I just got uh, color strips, like from Home Depot, I think, and I just cut them up, you know, and we can go, ah, ah, x, ah, x, ah, x, ah, x, ah, x, right? It's nice if you can then hold them together and still do your TPR. That's why I like kind of having um, having things that are easy to hold. Uh, another way, I have this nifty contraption. <laughs> I don't really use this in classes very much, but, but it is kind of fun for the mock. So basically, you know, you would cover up the one you're not using. So, ah, right? You could even stick it on your keyboard. Ah. Ah. Axe. 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 
right? So you should really be having your student do 50% of the talking throughout your lesson. Super important. They should be repeating what you're saying for the most part. Um, and then if you do something like this, then it's really easy to add in those other letters, right? So the tack, you can just hold something up. Fax, do it quickly. Shout out to my girl Bree, who did an amazing job with this one uh, when she practiced for me. She was like so quick with it, but it was totally perfect timing and she did an awesome job. So lots of ways to do it. Um, I do recommend, you know, you can, <laughs> This is a really fun one. You can use sticky notes on your hands if you want. Um, I've had candidates, I recommended this to some candidates and the, the mock class mentors really liked it. Um, so, you know, ax, 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 ax. You know, um, these are actually sticky notes that are sticky the whole way. You don't have to go buy anything, but it kind of just helps out and it makes it look fun. You can even clap them together and then show if you want. Um, but yeah, just have fun with this one. Uh, be sure that you are listening for any pronunciation mistakes and correcting them very quickly. Okay, so the next one, <laughs> the memory game. Everybody loves the memory game. Okay, so this one, yes, you can just use the screen. You'll be hopping from slide number, let's see, 11 to slide number 12. You'll just be hopping back and forth. Um, I think just just from my experience and from most of my candidates, it's easier if you use a physical copy. You don't have to print the exact one. You can color something if you want, but be sure that you are using the pictures and not the words uh, because they're supposed to be recognizing them based on the pictures uh, for the fox and the ox. Now, I covered, I, I copied it, printed it out, and I covered each one with a post-it note. You'll notice the post-it note is not see-through. I've seen that happen. Uh, be sure you check that if you want to do it like this. And fun tip, be sure you know quickly uh, which way uh, you're holding it. You don't want to hold it up for your mock class mentor and then do this. <laughs> That's embarrassing. So I have a little post-it note here, just like a fail-proof way if I forget which way I put on the sticky notes. So basically the main thing if you remember nothing else from the memory game, you really just want to get your student talking, okay? You want them talking, but more specifically, you want them saying X, fox, and ox. So this memory game kind of allows for you to play with their abilities a little bit. So like if they are really basic and you don't think they can really do a lot independently, you can certainly stick to just doing one row on here. And if they're really not getting it, just help them out with one at a time, okay? This is just to keep them practicing. Think of it as like a summary at the end for them to see what they can remember. Um, but if they're very advanced, you can certainly hop between the slides or try to have them actually remember what's under them, okay? So um, maybe you just wanna do the top ones. If you have like, you know, you feel like your student can do it uh, with minimal help, then you could just do the top row. So I would do something like, oh, what do you see? X, good. Oh, what do you see? Fox, fox. Good job. Whoop. What do you see? Ox. Ox. Yes. Now, if your student is advanced, use those target sentences. You probably won't have time from most people's um, experience. You won't have time to do target sentences too much on here um, unless your student really just went really fast throughout the lesson, but at least have them saying the vocabulary words. And then after you've had them say it, you can even have them say it together, X, Fox, Ox, if you want, <gasps> then cover them up. And I suggest not having the one showing that um, that has the pictures on it when you are trying to quiz them. If you are doing it on here, you know, then you go right in. So you just had them say X, Fox, Ox. Hmm. Hmm. Usually, you don't even have to ask a question at this point. They understand, but you can say, 
What do you see? And then see if they're right. Good job. Now, if they're not right, hmm. ox? Usually they'll correct their own mistake. You, this one, I think it stresses people out a little bit because it depends a lot on your student, your student's level and how your student is doing in the lesson. Just do the best you can. The memory slide will not make or break you for, you know, it, it on its own will not make or break you. So just like do the best that you possibly can and get your students saying those words again. That's pretty much the whole point. So that takes us to the watch and say slide. Uh, this is the one that has IX on it. This is my favorite way to do this type of slide. So um, it says to use flashcards. You can make your own flashcards. I made my own flashcards with a crayon um, for the letters that are on the bottom. So basically, I have a dry erase board here, and I actually used a wet erase marker so that it wouldn't smudge when I used it. You know, one of these good old vis-a-vis -vis from uh, the classroom way back when. So I used a wet erase marker, and then basically what, this, what the slide says to do is to take out the flashcards, hold up a flashcard, and ask the student to read, to read it, right? So like I would go through like, hmm. Probably have your students say this first, right? X. X. <gasps> hmm. Hmm. K. K. X. <gasps> Kicks. Good job, right? Quickly, get your next one. <gasps> uh. Uh. Six. Six, yes. You'll notice I took the training wheels off completely. The student is doing all the work now. Now, if the student messes something up, like if the student were to make this sound like an N or something, I would, of course, jump in and help. Mm -hmm. X. Mix, good job. Okay, so you want to be sure that you go through each one. Watch the glare. This is the glare I was talking about. Watch it. You might have to um, turn your board a little bit, uh, but that's a great way to do it. And the second half of that is getting your student to write on the board. So it says teacher holds up two cards, says a word using one letter, and students have to write the letter in the blank. So I suggest that you slow, you show the first one. So you just went through and quickly did each letter, right? Let's say that now, now I kind of hold this up, look at this, and I say, hmm, listen, mix, hmm, mm? or t, mix, hmm, yes, good, look, look, I, right, Mix, mix, I write M. <gasps> mix. Okay, okay. Hmm, hmm. Six. Six. Er or s. Six. S yes. <gasps> You write it, you write it. Good job, okay? That's all that you need to do. So I recommend that you kind of model it for the student first, and then you go ahead and have them help you out uh, by writing. So hopefully you have time to get through this whole slide. Uh, if not, you probably just wanna do a little bit on it and then do your goodbye because goodbyes are important. Um, for your goodbye, keep it simple, keep it fairly short. Of course, if you have extra time left over, you can maybe, maybe that would be a good time to pull in your props. <gasps> what do you see? You know, if you've got the time. Otherwise, you could say something like, <gasps> you, you did a great job today, Leslie. Good job. <gasps> You got one, two, 
two, three, four, five flowers. Good job. Thank you. See you soon. Goodbye. You know, you want to congratulate the student. Good job, nice work, whatever you want to say. Um, and be sure that you are cheerful and you can thank them if you want. Something like, see you soon, see you later, and then goodbye. And I always like to hold something fun up to the camera at the end uh, before I click out. But uh, you can do whatever you want for your mock class mentor. So I hope that these tips have been helpful to you. I like to be as thorough as possible. Um, now, as promised, I'm going to show you my recommendation for the times. So now keep in mind, you may go faster or slower on certain slides. That is totally, totally up to you, how you practice it. Um, when I did it for my mock class mentor, it slowed me down a lot. So I kind of had to find ways to speed it up a little bit. So I made sure that I clicked quickly to the next slide. I didn't spend time tinkering with the computer. Um, little ways to cut time you want to do. Uh, but I've recently made this for my uh, candidates that I help. So basically, you may want to pause the video. The way that I have it, um, I put the slide name here and then the total time that I think you should spend on that slide based on my experience. And then the total time, like by the end of that slide, you should be at this minute mark. Um, so for example, by the end of the point and read, you should be at about 11 minutes. So what I did for my mock class, which is a little squirrely, um, <laughs> but I had little post-it notes that I stuck around the outside of my computer on the back, stuck it with tape so that it wouldn't fall during the class. And I put little reminders to myself on there. And part of the reminder that I put was the, the time that I should be at by the end of a certain slide. So like, I think I wrote um, X, you know, X about 7.15. So I could check really quickly, you know, at 7.15, was I truly like finish with the X slide because if not, I probably needed to pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, so you can just like put a little note to yourself in one spot or around your computer so that you can keep an eye on your time because it does change sometimes when you have a student there. Um, so I hope that this has been helpful to you. I love coaching people, so feel free to follow my steps below and I will happily be your coach. Thank you so much and happy teaching. Goodbye.